Good morning. My name is Wanda Mosley. I'm the National Field Director at Black Voters Matter. So first, uh, Janice and Melanie, thank you so much for convening, for your leadership, and for inspiring and reminding us that these fights have not gone away. They continue, and we cannot sit home silent, hoping for change. We've got to get in these streets. We've got to get in these state houses. We've got to get in front of these elected officials and remind appointed officials to do their job. So here today, knowing that there's been some activity, Melanie didn't cancel this press conference because just because there's a little chatter and you might have proposed something and put something on the floor, there are no guarantees. Like Melanie said, she's been here four or five times because y'all keep playing around with our rights. And we are here today to tell you, stop. Because like Bishop said, we put you in and we'll take you out. Maybe, maybe Mr. President needs to be reminded that it was black voters in South Carolina who resurrected his candidacy. Maybe he should be reminded that he said he would, quote, fight like hell for voting rights. Well, well, Mr. President, I, I ain't seen you put on no gloves. I ain't seen you throw no punches. I ain't seen you use the power of your office to defend my right to vote. So maybe Leader Schumer needs to be reminded that it was black voters in Georgia who made him leader, who lifted him from minority to leader. So as Bishop said, sir, keep playing. We put you in and we gonna what? So, you know, this is only my third trip to DC, Melanie. And if I'm honest, y'all, as much as I love standing in front of all these beautiful, powerful black women and allies, I really don't want to be here. I, I really don't. Because my right to vote is guaranteed by the Constitution, by my birth. Generations have fought for this right. My great-grandmother, Ollie Mae Charleston, born in 1911 in Ada, Oklahoma, fought for that. My grandmother, Joanne Kirkham, fought for that. And here where I am, the fourth generation of my lineage is still making that same fight. But you know, I, I'd rather be working with our folks in, in, in working on things like climate change, trying to understand why it is that we have Cancer Alley in, in Louisiana, why folks are suffering uh, because of a septic tank issue along the Panhandle in Jacksonville, Florida, why it is that a late winter storm can take one of the largest cities in the country, Houston, back to being in a third world state because they don't have clean water. So I would rather be working on those things other than something that is guaranteed to me by my birth. And yet and still, here I am. And let me also just say while I'm here and I have this moment, and I hope these elected officials hear me, it is supremely disrespectful to hear you say, well, voting rights activists and advocates, we're going to need you to just, you know, work a little harder. Register more people to vote. Get more people to the polls. What do you think we've been doing? Why do you think you have this power that you refuse to use to save the right to vote to the very people who put you in those seats? So you keep on dissing black women if you won't and see what happens. You keep on dissing uh, the reproductive rights allies and organizations and see what happens. Because we are no longer asking, we are demanding that you finish the job, that you do your job. Because again, these rights that are guaranteed to us, we should not have to fight so hard for them. But you, you, you lead us to, we are ready. We hear, we stand arm in arm, allies, strong people, because as Melanie said, you won't out-organize us. You won't out-strategize us, and you will not outwork us. So you keep underestimating us. You keep disrespecting us. You keep uh, forgetting how you got there, and you will see what happens. Thank you.